What's going on YouTube? Trucking the Life here one more time. Girl. Guys and girls and girls and girls. Yeah. Three ways guys lose their shirt in this owner operated business, guys, in trucking. Um, this could go company driver or owner operator, but today I'm gonna touch on owner operator. And one is about making decisions, you know, um, as far as like maintenance. I'm gonna try to touch on that a little bit. I did some videos on this before, but I don't know, guys. Some people didn't get it. I don't think. I don't think some people are really catching it, man. But I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do what I could. Do my part. And uh, but anyway, we'll get to it, guys. But anyway, before I get to that, this is one thing I'm talking about by making decisions. I have a wheel seal leak, and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. So, in case you guys have a wheel seal leak, you better be able to catch stuff like this. And again, I'm gonna go into the decision from that, guys. Good segue. Why not, right? All right, back of the truck, right here. Fifth wheel, left, right, left, right. All right anyway. I got a wheel seal right here. Look, see the grease? See the grease on the see the grease on the drum? But anyway, that's the drum right there with the brake. Look at the drum right here. You see like a little wet right there around the drum? Now when these wheel seals blow, sometimes it'll be all on the tire, but sometimes it leak like this. And it'll be sometimes it'll leak so low that you don't know it's leaking. And all your oil is coming out of this diff is going to is coming out. So this will eventually dry up. You can blow it right in because you run out of oil because it's all getting leaked out in the drum. You can't even see it. But sometimes they'll blow real bad where it'd be on the on the on the on the tire. You can do it like this, you can feel it with your tire. You can feel the tire with your hand. You can feel it on there. So that's one that's one thing, guys, that I'm just saying. Like when you look over your truck, you try to catch stuff like this. I caught that. A mechanic didn't catch that. DOT didn't catch that. I caught it. I tried to get it fixed the other day, but it just wasn't happening. So I went about the wheel seals myself and uh brakes. And also too. When you when you change when you change these seals and the oil get on a on a on a um on the brakes, if you got the money, if you got the money, I would say this: change the brakes too. What happened was what happened, what will happen is because the oil is inside the brakes, you can wash the brakes off, put them back on. They may last a couple of months, but eventually they'll start cracking. I mean, one time I had a uh, I had just replaced. All the brakes on here, and I blew a wheel seal. I think it was my favorite was this one. I blew this wheel seal. Brand new brakes, guys. I mean, the brakes were on there. I think two days. Wheel seal blew, and they got the they got the brakes all wet. Now my money was like looking too crazy. I'm, I'm getting my money worth them brakes, baby. I'm gonna rinse them off with water, and whatever solvents they got to get to get it going. And now I wait till they crack because this is going to crack eventually. I had three of them crack. This I learned the hard way. So I was like, you know what? I had to make a decision. I'm gonna I'll park it, and I had some business to take care of anyway. And I said I'd come back and I do it do another day, which is today. So I gotta get it done today. So now I waiting on a mobile mechanic guy to come. So it cost me more, but at least I ain't gotta move my truck today because I'm not working today. So I'm saving on fuel, but I'm spending more. I'm spending convenient fee. Sometimes you gotta make decisions like that, or you might have to go to a shop and you have to wait to get in the shop. Now you sitting in the shop all day as if you're working all day and you ain't there. Or leave your truck there, find a way back to your car. So many decisions you gotta make, guys. But that's one. Ben, I think a lot of guys lose their shirt in this business because they don't know how to make decisions. Like decisions like that. They get, they get analysis paralysis. Do I get my own part? Do I go to the shop and let them get their own part? They get the part from me? Do I um, call the shop the next day or the, day, the same day to kind of ask them what's going on in my truck or do I just kind of leave it up to them to call me? Do I try to figure out the problem myself on my truck? Try to at least look and kind of get a good idea of what's going on in my truck, if possible? Or do I just take it to the shop and let them figure it out? These are decisions that will cost you a lot of money. Because here's a, here's a couple things. I'm going to go to my next point. If you take it to a shop and try to let them figure it out, now it's a guessing game. Now sometimes, if they know exactly what to fix, sometimes they'll be able to they'll be more apt to fix your truck a lot quicker because they know what the problem is. So you say, okay, the customer, they'll put on an the invoice. Customer requested, repair this. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, okay, well, we repaired it. So if you say it ain't fixed, it's on you. But you told us to fix this. So that's that's one tricky side about going in and telling them what to fix versus letting them find it themselves. Or what, what I usually do is I go in and say, hey, I think it's this. I hear noise coming from this area. It's fuel. Uh, when they got truckers, they got trucks and fuel. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't going to penny pinch all the time. But you definitely got to know how to play the fuel game. If you don't know how to play the fuel game... One of your most biggest expenses in a truck is fuel or diesel, you know? Or if you got an electric truck, I don't know too much about them. It might be electricity, electrical, I don't know. But whatever the case may be, I know I got diesel, so. Diesel is one of the highest 
contributors to people going out of business because they can't afford to pay their fuel bills. You know what I'm saying? And I understand people got different ways of setting it up and whatever, but if you ain't got, if you don't know how to play the fuel game with all your trucks, you may have one truck, let alone 15, but you don't know how to play the fuel game with it. Like you don't know how to go to like certain customers, I mean certain like, um, if I, I'll tell you like this, if I had a fleet of trucks, what I would do is to set, kind of save on a fuel bill, I'll try to get a fuel car with like certain uh, fuel distributors, like Pilots, TAs, Loves, whatever. So I say I got a fleet coming in, I wanna know if I get a fleet discount or if I can lose so much, so many on, so many points on the pump if most of my trucks fill up at your truck stop. I would do stuff like that to kind of make sure that, um, it got of course it gotta be feasible. You gotta be able to make sure you ain't going out the way to do that, but it gotta make sense all the way around, at least majority of the way. So I understand that, but I would try to do stuff like that to kind of save, cut on fuel costs because fuel costs is going to be one of the most biggest, if not the biggest, contributors of somebody losing their shirt in this business. Can't keep up with the fuel. It's like a slow killer. It's like a slow killer. That fuel, fuel will, it will, it will, it will bring down. It brought down many fleets, like owners. I'm talking about. It brought down a lot of people. Like they feel, but like when the pandemic first happened. Right after the pandemic, you had like fuel that went up. I don't know. I know it went up more than 100%. It, it was up there. Like fuel bill, fuel costs doubled, if not kind of tripled. And if you don't know how to play the fuel, fuel game with that, when that come about, you might have problems. You might lose your shirt. They don't understand the market, the trucking market. They feel like, I ain't going to say what they feel like. I've seen this um, where with people... They say, well, I got a truck, I got a mouth, I can talk, I'm competent. Let me go out here, go on this low board, let me just try to run some freight, right? And they start running cheap freight. Over time, that brings you down. I mean, a lot of people don't even know the uh, contributing factors to why they got brought down. All they know is when they had a couple of major events happening with trucking, they ain't know what to do. They're like, well, I don't know what happened. I ain't had the money to get something fixed. I ain't had the money to get a truck at the shop. I ain't had the money to do something, you know what I'm saying? And because they don't know, understand the market, because the market seems good, so you figure I'm gonna go buy smoke equipment. I'm gonna just buy a bunch of stuff while everything's good. And you think the market always gonna stay the same? To be, to you think the market gonna sustain itself enough for your growth? So people grow according to the market. You shouldn't do that. Grow according to your growth, and then you adjust to the market. That's why sometimes people that like have like uh, one truck and they, they they see the money's real real good. They try to buy two, three, four, five, six, seven more trucks. And then when the market kind of downturn a little bit, like it's doing right now, like it's really doing right now, you don't have enough work to feed the drivers you got. So now drivers gonna start leaving because at the end of the day, they want to eat too. So if you can't provide the work for them, they're gonna find somewhere else where they can provide the work for them and be able to make consistent, constant money. The drivers are not loyal. And I don't get, I understand that you want people to be loyal to your company, but at the end of the day, they out there to make their money to be able to take care of, provide for their family. And if the boss or the, or the owner make the bad decision by not understanding the market or bringing somebody in who do understand the market, then you have the, the, the so many uh, catastrophes that happens from that. Like you have the truck, the drivers leaving, you have the, the truck sitting, which you still gotta pay insurance and all that stuff to keep the cost is the carrying every month on them things, but you don't have the wheels turning to offset the cost that in turn will bring you down unless you just start selling off equipment but then you might think like, well, if I set off equipment, then what will the market pick up? You don't understand the market. That's all, that's all that tells me, you don't understand the market. You don't ever stretch yourself to the point where you're so thin where you predicated off of today's money, you gotta do projections, or today's um, customer base, or today's market. You have to do projections. Like I said, don't people understand, people don't study the market. And I, this is for people who wanna grow fleets, but also too, this happens with small guys too. They say, I got some money, I got a truck. I'm, I used to be a salesman, now I want to drive trucks because I heard his money in that. And you get into it, you go buy your truck, you need to go to the company drive right. You just go buy your truck right out, and then you go hop into the game, not knowing, not, knowing the, not knowing the game or the market. And after a while, you realize it's a marathon, not a sprint. You was running a sprint. And sometimes it, hop, it happens, you lose, you know? I tell anybody, it's by the grace of God I lasted this long in this business. But I learned a lot over the years. I learned a lot, but these are the three things, guys, that I believe that um, make people, it cause people to lose their shirt in this business, you know? Because it's, it's one of them things like, I don't know. I know, I know this. 
And if there's nothing wrong with aspiring to be better, to do better, and want to just like progress your life in certain ways. But when you when you deal with a business of trucking that's so volatile, it's, it's risky business. It may sound kind of cool. Oh, you can get a truck fixed while you in this parking spot. All oh, that sounds pretty cool. No, I'm spending money for this. I'm paying extra now because I got because I got somebody coming to me. You know what I'm saying? So the money you think you're making, it could go really quick in this business because it's so volatile and the market is so jacked up right now. In case you guys didn't know, it's so jacked up right now. A lot of guys selling off equipment and losing equipment and going out of business. It's a bigger play at hand, guys, out here. And I ain't gonna say it on here because I know people watching. But anyway, I digress. So why YouTube? Hope this video is helpful. Give you a little understanding of what's going on, chat. And I'll see you guys in the video. Peace.